Okay, today we're going to learn, uh, learn about the units of pressure. The SI unit of pressure is in Pascal defined as a pressure of one newton distributed over an area of one meter squared. So a newton is approximately equal to the force exerted by the weight of an apple, and the force of one newton, one newton is sufficient to accelerate a one kilogram mass at a rate of one meter per second squared on a frictionless surface. On Earth, <coughs> The acceleration exerted by this gravitational field will accelerate any mass at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, if you're standing on the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field is exerting a force on you, but you're not accelerating uh, downwards because the ground is exerting a force upward to keep you from moving. But you are nevertheless exerting a force by, because you're in that gravitational field and your, your mass responds to the presence of the gravitational field by having a, a, a downward force. The force exerted upon objects on the surface of the Earth is a function of mass, too. More massive objects exert more force. And F is equal to ma. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, where the force is, uh, has units of newtons, the mass is measured in kilograms, and the acceleration is in meters per second squared. The base units of force, therefore, are kilogram meters per second squared. Um, and that is what we call the newton. Now, as an example, what force is exerted by gravity on a 100 kilogram man standing on the Earth's surface? Force equal mass times acceleration. The mass of man is 100 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. You get 981 kilogram meters per second squared, which we can state as 981 newtons. So now you have more or less a ballpark understanding of how much the newton is. Let's examine the concept of pressure now. Pressure is a function of two things, force and area. So you can have a, a certain force being exerted over a larger area, or you can have the same force being exerted over a smaller area, and we'll see that that is what helps us to understand the meaning of pressure. Even a light force exerted over a very concentrated small area can give you a very high pressure. The same man is standing on one foot. What pressure does he exert on the floor? Well, the answer to that is that an average shoe can be approximated to a rectangle. It's a somewhat rectangular shape, about 8 centimeters across and 30 centimeters long. And that gives you about 240 centimeters of, of, of area. If that man is exerting a force of 981 newtons just by standing on one foot, and you were to um, spread that force over the entire foot, assuming it's evenly distributed, a foot is 240 centimeters divided 10,000 centimeters per square meter. Remember that a meter is 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. It's a measurement of area. So that's 10,000 centimeters squared. 981 newtons divided by 2.4 times 10 to the minus 2 meters squared means that that man is exerting a force of uh, 40,875 pascals. We can convert that into kilopascals, recalling that one kilopascal is equal to a thousand pascals, and that equals 40.875 kilopascals. Now that quantity might mean nothing to you if you're not familiar with the idea of kilopascals. A lot of people, though, are familiar with the notion of pound per square inch. Our atmosphere exerts a pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch, and I've stated that quantity in all the commonly used units. One atmosphere, meaning the pressure that we feel at the bottom of the Earth's atmosphere, which is an ocean of air, essentially, that's the pressure we feel at sea level, one atmosphere. It's equal to enough pressure to raise a column of mercury to a height of 76 centimeters, or 760 millimeters. So we call it millimeters Hg, which is also named in honor. The same unit has the same quantity, the same size as the Tor, which was named in honor of Evangelista Torricelli, the first scientist to do experiments on air pressure. So the Tor and the millimeters of Hg are the same unit in, in uh, magnitude. It, and incidentally, when we take blood pressure, these are the units that we're using. When we say 120 over 80, we're saying 120 tor over 80 tor. That's our blood pressure readings. They don't usually mention tor or millimeters Hg. They just say 120 over 80, two measurements being the systolic and the diastolic. Uh, Pascal's, Again, is a pressure of one newton air distributed over an area of one meter squared. You see that one atmosphere of pressure is a huge number of pascals because the pascal is a very small unit. 
So 101,325 pascals equals one atmosphere. If you use kilopascals, it's 101.325. You simply move the decimal place three over. That's equal to a pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch, or enough pressure to raise a column of mercury, which is 29.92 inches, which is the same as 76 centimeters. Now, if we were to convert this pressure of the man's foot on the ground, this is a 200 pound man, recall, 100 kilograms, actually 220 pound man. Uh, if we convert that pressure of his one foot on the ground into tor, all we have to do is take any one of the two quantities we want to convert, so in this case, tor and kilopascals. We see that 760 tor equals 101.325 kilopascals. We want to eliminate kilopascals, so we'll put kilopascals in the denominator allowing us to cancel kilopascals and convert this pressure into tor, and it equals 306 tor. If we want to convert it into pounds per square inch, we do the same thing. 14.7 pounds per square inch is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. Again, we put kilopascals in the denominator because we want to be able to cancel it and get our answer, our quantity, into pounds per square inch. So it's 5.92 pounds per square inch. So a 220-pound man standing on one foot it exerts about five, about six pounds per square inch on the sole of his foot, assuming that the weight is even, evenly distributed. If we convert it into atmospheres, one atmosphere equals 101.325 kilopascals. Again, we can cancel kilopascals, giving us 0.403 atmospheres. Now I want you to pay attention to an interesting fact. Suppose a 45 kilogram woman, which is only 99 pounds, so the woman is less than half the weight of the man, Suppose a 45 kilogram woman wearing stilettos leans back so all her weight is momentarily on one heel, which is one centimeter by one centimeter, it's about that big on the stiletto. What pressure does she exert on the ground? F equals ma. Here's the 45 kilograms of a woman. Here's the acceleration due to gravity. Her mass, sorry, her force, the force that gravity pulls her down with is 441.45 newtons. Now we know that the definition of pressure is the force divided by the area upon which the force is impinging on. So 441 newtons over 1 ten thousandth of a square meter, one centimeter squared. Remember, a square meter is 100 meters, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, 100 by 100 is 10,000. So 10,000 square centimeters in one meter squared. That's why I've turned this into one ten thousandth of a meter squared. That's what it equals. One centimeter squared is one ten thousandth of a meter squared. So that force over that small area gives you a force of 4.4 million pascals, which, when you convert it into pounds per square inch, is 640 pounds per square inch. So in conclusion, a small war a woman wearing high heels exerts more than 100 times the pressure exerted by a husky man, albeit over a much smaller area. So if she's pressing that 600 pounds per square inch is on the area that is touching under her stiletto. So it, it is theoretically possible for a light woman wearing stiletto heels to put dents in the floor, if, especially if the heel has a hard, uh, a hard tip. Now as an example, as a practice example, I'd like you to try to convert 100 pounds per square inch into millimeters Hg, the tor, and the atmosphere. And I'll give you the solution to that right now. Supposing we start with 100 pounds per square inch, and we want to go from uh, pounds per square inch into, H, into millimeters Hg, we see here over here that 760 millimeters Hg is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So we can say, if we want to eliminate the pounds per square inch, times 760 millimeters Hg divided by 14.7 pounds per inch squared. The pounds per inch squared cancels, and the answer will be 100 times 760 divided 14.7. The answer we get on the calculator is 5.170068.03 times 10 to the 3 millimeters of mercury. We're only going to use uh, three significant figures, and so we would write uh, 5,170 millimeters of mercury. Remember that zeros are spacers in significant figures, so this is actually only three significant figures.
I was to put a decimal, then it would become four, and I didn't put the decimal. So it's 517 millimeters HG. Sorry, 5107 millimeters HG. 